This morning we're continuing our sermon series called Kingdom Treasure, where we have been taking a look at different pieces of scripture, different passages, where Jesus is teaching us what the kingdom of God is all about, what it looks like and what it's all about. So the first week, we uncovered that the kingdom of God is like a treasure that's buried in the ground. It's extremely valuable, right? And it's worth any sacrifice that we could ever give. The second week, we discovered that the kingdom of God may be small, it may start insignificant, but once it's placed into the hearts of faithful people, it can have this huge impact, not just on us, but the world around us. Today, we're going to search the passages again, and we're going to look at some scriptures about another kingdom truth. In fact, one that talks a lot about planting and growing, if you can't already tell them from the children's message and what I have here next to me. Next to me here, I do have a tomato plant. This is actually a yellow pear tomato plant. You can see some of the fruit is already coming on because tomatoes are fruits. You did know that, right? I'm not saying that wrong. <laughs> they are fruit. Um, but this plant is growing beautiful. It's got luscious green leaves on it. It's got fruit. It's growing nice and tall. Uh, in fact, these plants actually amaze me. These are very, very amazing plants. They may not seem like much. Maybe the fruit is small, but it gets tons of it on it and it grows just amazingly. In fact, we grow these every year at our house, a couple of them usually. And this year I thinned down and only put one in the garden and I understood why this week because God wanted me to get another one to be able to put it in a pot to be able to bring it in to show you. However, so now we'll have lots of them again. But what amazes me most about these plants is how they grow and how high they grow. So we have garden boxes and on the outside of those garden boxes on two sides, we have four foot posts. They stand about four foot tall and we put twine between them like a fence for the plant to be able to grow up through so that it can just keep reaching to the sky. But what usually happens is they get to the top of that made fence and then they make a turn and they just start growing down until they get to the ground and they don't stop there. Last year they grew so well that they kept going out about a foot, maybe two feet on the ground yet at it. So if I would have stood this up all the way, if I could have done that, it would have been like 10 feet tall. We're talking about a small yellow pear tomato plant, 10 feet tall. That, that's pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? This one's small yet, but I think this is even pretty amazing that even just being this height, it's already got such beautiful fruit coming on it. It's hard to believe that a massive plant like this, before it had roots, before it had a stem, before it had leaves, before it had any kind of fruit like that, it was nothing more than a tiny seed. A tiny seed, so tiny, I was gonna try to show you on my hand, but you would never see it. So I took a picture of it. This is the tomato, I, I took a picture of the package, so I have proof to you that this is what came out of that package. Do you see it on my hand? Can anybody even see it from where you're sitting? It's so small that it just looks like a mole on my hand, doesn't it, or a speck of dirt. <laughs> But that's the seed. That's how tiny it is on my hand, about the size of the tip of a pen. And it grows to be a plant like this and up to like 10 feet tall. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Never, it's never, God never ceases to amaze me. But it takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of patience to grow a plant like this. Um, and it takes the right kind of soil and it takes the right kind of conditions to receive a harvest of any kind of tomato plant. So the scripture that we're looking at here today has a lot to do with, with planting and with sowing and with you know, planting and growing, I should say, um, and growing into something massive and something beautiful. Our next kingdom treasure is found in two parables that Jesus teaches. In fact, I wanna share one with you first. It's the shorter one of the two that I shared with the kids last week. It comes from Matthew 13, verses 31 through 32. Here's another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. So as you read in the New Testament, you'll quickly discover that there's all sorts of agricultural illustrations going on. And this is because Jesus, when he's speaking to the everyday people who's living there, most of them are farmers. Most of them grow their food. Most of them grow something. So they understand this illustration. So he speaks these spiritual truths through parables, which are stories that are made up, yes, but they're there to be able to teach the truth of what Jesus is, is trying to get across, the spiritual truth. So he uses the seed and represents, uh, that it represents the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that is planted in a field. And the first thing to know is that 
A mustard seed is also incredibly small. In fact, I took a picture of one of those too. It's not much bigger than the tomato seed. In fact, the tomato seed might have a beat. It might actually be a little bit smaller. But you can just barely see that in my hand too. So you can imagine when you start to plant these in the dirt, what happens? They like disappear. Especially if you're using soil like mine up here that has like the little white pieces in it. You know, they just disappear within all of that and you, you can't find the seed. If you wanna pick it back up, forget it. It's gone, it's hidden in there. But after a short time, the seed starts to grow roots, it starts to sprout, it comes up out of the dirt, out of the top of it. And before you know it, a mustard seed, this tiny little mustard seed, grows into a great big plant as well. In fact, they can grow to be at least six feet tall. Again, how do these tiny little seeds grow into something like that, right? The text is telling us that it would become a, a garden uh, for birds. It would become like a tree for birds to rest on. So it's even strong enough for them to be able to sit on. So the first point here that I want to point out that Jesus is saying is that the kingdom is a seed, all right? It's a seed, something that grows over time when it's planted in the right environment. I have to make sure I say that. When it's planted in the right environment, then it's going to grow. The kingdom is a treasure that begins tiny. And if we look at it just through Jesus, it started in one person, right, through Jesus Christ, and then it multiplied through the disciples. And then where did it go? It multiplied worldwide, right? global all over. So it started in one tiny little town in the Middle East. If you look at where Jesus was from, Nazareth wasn't even on the maps. It was that tiny. It started there and now it's worldwide. It's all over the place and millions and millions of people are Christians and following Jesus. This means that the smallest action can grow into a major kingdom impact. This means that the tiniest gift can become a great blessing. It means that a bit of faith, just a little bit, can grow into beautiful faith, beautiful faith of obedience. The kingdom is like a seed and it grows when it is planted in the right environment. The other passage that Jesus talks about or uses a seed as an example about the kingdom is in Matthew 13, three through nine. He told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen, okay, so he starts off with that listen. That means he's trying to get your attention. This is very, very important. Pay attention, listen up. A farmer went out to plant, to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlining rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon withered under the hot sun and, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So the story begins with this farmer who goes out and he's planting seed in his field, right? The seed in this story is incredibly valuable. And if you think about it, any seed is going to have this it's going to have a promise in it, right? It's encapsulated promise is what's inside that seed. It's full of the necessary pieces to be able to grow life. So a tiny little seed, I think I have my little seed that I gave you here today. A tiny little seed has potential to grow life, right? It has potential to do amazing things. And each and every seed the farmer has scattered has also that same potential to grow and produce life. The farmer would go out into the field. He would take a handful of seed out of his satchel and he would just toss it out, right? He was like just scattering it, broadcasting it all over the place. And what's kind of amazing is that he doesn't seem really concerned about where it lands, right? He's just throwing it everywhere and anywhere and he's not really concerned about where it lands. But I think the people who were listening, who were farmers, who grew their own food, who understood how to grow things, probably were in a bit of shock when they heard this story about where the seed was landing. Why would you waste seed? That's valuable. That's your livelihood. Why would you waste seed and throw it towards the rocks or towards the thorns and the weeds? Why would you even do that or towards the hard, uh, worn down path? He says that some of the seeds fell in the hard path. They were eaten up by the birds right away right? They didn't even have a chance to get down in. They were just scooped up. Some fell in the rocky soil and began to grow only to be scorched by the sun. Their roots weren't deep enough. The thorns, uh, or excuse me, they weren't deep enough, so they just died off. And then some fell among the thorns and the seed took root, started to grow, 
but then the thorn and all the other weeds just choked it out and took out its life. Things really weren't looking good for the farmer so far of those first three cases until the fourth one comes along. Some of the seed that was sown did fall on fertile soil. Ground that was ready. Pay attention to this. It fell on fertile soil, ground that was ready to receive the seeds and then allow those seeds to grow and to develop into something great. They were ready. In fact, these seeds produced 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as they should have, right? So Jesus says at the end of this, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. He said anyone with ears should listen and understand. In other words, don't miss the depth of this story. I know you've heard this one before. I have preached on this scripture before. I know you know this scripture. I know sometimes it might sound a little confusing because Jesus even had to go to the disciples because the disciples thought it was confusing too. And he gave them, and we'll work through that in a moment, an explanation of exactly what this meant. You know this, but don't miss the depth of this story. The kingdom is like seeds sown generously. It's given to everybody. The rocks, the thorns, the hard soil, the good soil, it's given to everybody. It's sown generously. My second point here for today is that the seed is the gospel sown into the people's hearts, and it is given to literally everyone who is willing to accept it. Everyone. God is always looking to grow his kingdom in the hearts of people. Every person has a heart that consists of some kind of varying types of soil. Some places the kingdom seed falls, it's going to grow. And other pieces of places that it falls, it's not going to grow. And Jesus goes on to explain in depth what all these four examples mean. <clears throat> he says, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil, the second one, represents or yeah, represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. So they're happy about it. This sounds great. This sounds wonderful. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as the problems, as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. The seed that fell in good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. The seed that I gave you this morning, everyone get a little pumpkin seed? You can take these home and plant them too, just like the children, and watch it grow and be reminded of what God can do in you. But right now, I just want you to put it in your hand. Would you just put it in your hand, hold it? If you lost it, we'll get you another one. <laughs> I know they're small. But if you have it, put it in your hand. And I want to be real clear this morning. The seed of the gospel this morning is being planted in each and every one of our hearts, your heart and my heart. Every time we listen to the word of God, every time we share the word of God, every time we're reading the Bible, the seed is being sown into our hearts, every one of us. I'm very honored that God gives me the opportunity to sow some of that into your hearts here today. And just like in the story of Jesus, the seed that is sown into our hearts has potential. It has great potential. Potential to live, potential to produce a crop, a beautiful, amazing crop. But according to the story, some of the seeds that fall into certain areas, that fall into certain hearts, is not going to grow. And we have to recognize that and understand that because we need to be careful. Right here, right now, yes, even within this room, just because you're sitting in church does not mean your heart is the good soil. We could be falling very deeply, very dangerously into a heart that is one of these other soils that's either hard, too rocky, too distracted, too taken up by the rest of the world. We need to pay attention to the kind of soil that we truly are. Now, I personally and physically, <laughs> have experienced the struggle of sowing and growing seed. I'm not going to talk spiritually about my own heart for just a moment. I'll give you an actual physical example. 
when my husband built our home, he built it a few years before I was married to him, um, and there really wasn't much ground or grass had started. Some had started by itself and so forth. So every year that, that I've been there um, since, we live in the woods and we fight a lot to get grass. It's no fault to anyone. It's just because we live in the woods and we have all sorts of hickory nuts that fall and we have all sorts of shaded places. We have lots of rocky ground and those rocks. It amazes me. Every year I go through and I'm picking out the rocks in the yard and you think you got them all. Guess what? Next spring, a whole bunch more come back. It's like, how do they do this? It's like they're growing too, right? But it's as the ground settles, rocks move, and we just, we have such a, a rocky ground. That's just what happens. I don't think if, if we put inches of topsoil on the top, I don't think it would matter. Those rocks would still eventually come out of even all of that. So we have a yard that's pretty hard to grow anything in it, um, for sure, but we try. And the dirt does vary. It varies from being kind of this clay dirt or even a sandy dirt to being really good dirt. And then we have some that's, again, rocky um, to some that's just out in the open and beautiful. Some's in full shade, some's in full sun. Some is, is bare even right now, and some is absolutely covered with weeds. But what I've noticed is that the different responses when I've tried to plant the seed, when I've tried to put it out there, it depends on the kind of ground, the kind of soil that it falls on. If it falls where all the hickory nuts are, well, I don't really get much. If it falls where the rocks are, I don't get much. I might get a couple little pieces here and there, and then the next year it looks like nothing came, and like just dies off. If it falls into like the sandy or the clay dirt, it doesn't grow very well there either. If it falls into just a shade and I don't have the right kind of grass seed, you might as well forget that too, right? Jesus is teaching that the kind of impact the truth of the gospel has on our lives has everything to do with the kind of heart we have, the kind of soil that we are. Some of our hearts are not favorable to that tiny seed of God growing. That's the truth of it. It's a sad truth, but it's true. Some of us, we're ready for that, right? We're ready. We've been fertilized. We're, we're raring to go. We want to have that grow, and it will grow. But I want you to really hear this today because the problem is not the seed. A lot of times I've thought that. Oh, maybe my grass seed was too old and that's why it didn't grow. Oh, I didn't put it in the right places or it was just terrible seed to begin with. It was cheap. The problem is not the seed. The problem is the soil because the same seed can get planted in a good spot with good soil and sun and it grows just fine. The problem is not the seed, it's the soil. So as a farmer sows, some of these seeds fall onto that, that beaten path, that well-worn path. And Jesus describes his heart as one that does not understand the good news, right? Like it hears it, but it just doesn't understand it. There's this feeling that some people who are given the good news of the kingdom have no idea what to do with it when they hear it. This person is unconcerned with the things of God. And, and maybe this is you. I've fallen into this trap where we get unconcerned with God. You've heard the things of God discussed so many times, you've probably lost count of it. This person ignores God's guidance in their life, and the person doesn't understand God's work in their life, not because of ignorance, but because of disregard. Because of disregard. So for a long time, maybe you've neglected to acknowledge God, and in doing so, your heart becomes hardened. It becomes calloused. You ever get the calluses on your hands, and they get so hard that it doesn't hurt there anymore? You know, when you're, you're raking or you're using something in your garden, it doesn't blister anymore. It's just because you've got hard calluses. Like, it just becomes numb, right? That's really what it's like here. The first type of heart here Jesus is discussing is a very dangerous one. It's a dangerous slope to fall down. Most of the time, this person has heard the right things. They've been pushed along in the right way, but they've been pushed away from God, or they push God away, I should say, so many times that they're no longer familiar with the conviction. They're just numb. They just ignore it. It doesn't touch them. The outcome here is that when the seed falls, it's then stolen away. Stolen away by the evil one so quickly because there is no place to take root. So the other seed, the second seed, falls on rocky soil. Jesus describes this as a heart that has heard the good news of the gospel, gets excited about it, finds some joy in it, right? Even responds to God and says, yes, I want to be a disciple. Yes, I'm a believer of Jesus. Yes, I accept your grace. I accept the Lord Jesus as my Savior. But when trouble comes, the shallow roots don't last, right? The shallow roots are not developed very deeply at all. So when the trouble comes, the sun comes out, they're just scorched and they die off. This heart is one that seems to see the gospel as only being attractive when it's good, right? Like thinking that life should always be good. 
There should always be blessing. I'm a Christian now. I'm following God. Everything should just work out for my benefit. Everything should be good. But because of this attitude, they never grow deep. Their roots never grow deep. So the conversations remain shallow. The commitment to Jesus remains shallow. A sacrificial living remains shallow. And when the hard time comes in whatever form they present themselves, someone gets sick, someone doesn't make it. Uh, there's a tragedy or just even the simple, I'm tired. I'm tired of getting up early Sunday mornings. I'd rather sleep in, right? They just fade off. Their faith just withers. Other seed, the third one he talks about, falls on soil that is full of weeds and thorns. Jesus describes this heart as one that allows a seed to, to grow in their lives, but unfortunately, it also allows other things to grow in their lives. And so what starts to happen? There's a competition, right? And there again, well, I don't feel like getting up so early Sunday morning, or I would rather do this, or something else came up. Something else distracts our hearts. And many today are so distracted, so distracted. Just Look around the room. I don't say this to pick on anybody who's not here today. I know some of our families are on vacation, and, you know, that's great. They should take a vacation. Everybody needs to step down from the world every now and then and do that. But if you look around our room, even when everybody's here, there's empty pews, right? You look around our world, there's so many people. They're so distracted and so taken away from God, so far and so distant. This is what happens. We think it's good, and I hear people say, oh, I believe in God. And I say, do you go to church? No, I don't go to church. Well, these are those people. God is great. God is wonderful. He is good. They know that, but they do not allow themselves to really get deep and get rid of all the other stuff and stay with God. So all the other stuff eventually starts just taking over. It could be a hobby. It can be money. It can be stuff. It can be addiction. It could be success. Whatever it just starts to take over. We've all seen both of these. And I know, uh, you know, just for an example, some people in my home church, I've seen it, and every church I've ministered it in, people will come to church and they'll be here for six months and they're all excited about it. But then all of a sudden it's just like kind of, you know, the honeymoon is over and they just get comfortable and it just kind of dies off. And it's all because the word doesn't get deep. If we don't allow the word to get deep into our hearts, if we don't allow ourselves to get deep into serving God and following Jesus, we'll end up in that same boat. We'll end up in that same way. Now, the good news is, is there's one final type of soil that Jesus talks about. And thankfully, thankfully, some of the seed does fall into that good soil. I don't know about you, but I want to be that good soil. And I'm not going to stand up here and tell you today, oh, I am that good soil. My heart is that good soil, because that is not true. That is not true. I know there are times where I can easily fall down those slippery slopes as well. But I want to be that good soil, and I want to be that good soil every day, all the time. And I hope you do, too. If we want to be that good soil, we will aim for that good soil. We won't always hit it. We'll fall short every now and then. Paul tells us, well, fall short of the glory of God. We're going to fall short. But if we're aiming towards it, we will hit it more days than not. For the seed that falls on this location, the result is, is really supernatural. Jesus says that it multiplies 30, 60, even 100 times the amount of seed that was planted. How does that happen? Okay, so, you know, maybe a farmer in that day would have known, yeah, you know, some things can multiply a little bit, and maybe I'll get 20 more times the seed that I planted. But that's just insane, and that's not normal. That's not natural to think that I'm going to get 30 or 60 or 100 times the amount of seed that was planted. So what Jesus is telling us here is that this is not just a natural thing. This is supernatural. This is a God thing. It's God who's going to grow you that much. It's God who's going to multiply it that much. The majority of farmers in that time, well, in any time, today even, spend their time nurturing the soil, tending the soil, right? Making sure that's healthy before they plant, making sure that it's healthy all the way along. After they plant, they're spraying the weeds, right? To even plant, they're testing the soil, they're tending to the soil, they put the right kind of fertilizer on. It's not just any kind of fertilizer, it's gotta be the right kind of fertilizer with the right kind of nutrients. They're tending to the soil. Remember, the problem is not the seed. The problem is the soil, and each year, Farmers do this over and over and over again, and I think we can learn something from them. Jesus, again, uses an example for a reason. We need to tend to our soil. We need to make sure that it's ready to receive the seed that God is planting in us and that it's nurtured all the way through until the harvest is done, and that's going to take as long as you are here on earth to complete. The good news is, is that we are not stuck in whatever other kind of soil we might be a part of right now. 
If you don't think you're in the good soil right now, you are not stuck there. It can be changed. Just like the farmer plows the ground, flips it, turns it over to get freshness out of it again, you can have that done for you too. We need to break up our soil. We need to get rid of the rocks. We need to get rid of the weeds and the thorns. And for many of us, maybe it's time to try something new. You know, maybe spending a certain amount of time in prayer with God each day, reading devotions. We have this wonderful upper room and daily bread books up there. If you don't know how to use that, start there. You know, maybe it's, it's getting into the word of God for 15 minutes a day. That's it, just 15 minutes a day. Just start something new. Maybe it's, maybe it's going on a mission trip. Maybe it's serving in this church in some way. You know, we have a lot of holes in this church. If you look at being a disciple and all the things that Jesus is asking us to do, we have holes in this church. You want to serve? You want to try something new? See me after church. God needs us to be able to do those things, right? He wants us to be able to do those things. So maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to repent of some kind of sin and receive the grace of God. A fertile heart is the only one who's going to produce the kind of fruit that God's trying to grow in you. Only a fertile heart is going to do that. What I love most about this story is that the farmer is so incredibly generous, right? He just sows everywhere, throws the seed to everyone, shares the gospel of Jesus with everyone. And, and take note of this. When you're ministering to other people, is everybody going to be ready to hear it and receive it and let it grow in them? No, no. As a pastor, if I thought everybody should be ready, I would have given up a long time ago. <laughs> so just keep sowing. Just keep being generous with that. The seed in this story falls in every location. And I don't think Jesus would tell us this parable without the amazing truth that no matter what the condition of our heart is today, that God is still casting out the seed. He is still trying to give you his love and grace no matter where your heart is today. He still wants to sow it in you no matter where you are today. So as a close today, I want us to just reflect on two questions. First off, what condition is your soil? What condition is your heart? Are you the hard soil, the hard heart where nothing even gets in? Are you the rocky soil where, you know, maybe it looks like it can start to grow, but it just gets, it just uh, withers out real fast? Or is it the soil in the weeds and the thorns that's very distracted? Or are you the good soil? I hope that's the soil at least that you're aiming for. The other question I want you to reflect on is are you ready to turn? If you're one of those first three soils especially, are you ready to turn and let Jesus do the necessary work in your life to position you in a place where you can be the good soil, where you can grow in the way that God is wanting you to grow? I know we're very impatient people, and often we're not willing to wait and see what God wants to grow in us. We want it here, we want it now, we just want it to be done. But we need to be patient in this. Just like this plant, uh, our tomato plants at home, I planted them at least a month or more ago, and they will not be done growing until September. They'll still be giving fruit, right? So it takes some time that we need to be patient. But the kingdom of God is like a, a slow-growing plant that when placed in the right condition, in the right kind of soil, it will grow from the tiniest bit of seed into something so good and so great, so great. So I want to ask you today to just Open your hearts to Jesus. Let the Spirit in and let the Spirit allow you to show you where, uh, show you first of what kind of soil you are and then to show you where you do need to make some changes and the new things that you can get into to help those changes along. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful story. It sounds simple, right? It sounds like we should just know, we should understand, but there really is a deep spiritual truth here. And many of us, allow our hearts to get hard or to get distracted or to get interfered with other things. But God, I pray today that you will show us where we're doing that. Each and every one of us, God, show us all where we are doing that. Be honest with us. Help us to be willing and vulnerable to hear that honest truth, to be able to take that criticism for our health, for the good of our lives, for the good of our souls. And then show us, God, how to turn to you Show us what new thing you might want us to be doing, reading your word, talking with a friend, confessing maybe some sin, whatever it is, God. Show us what we can do to turn and, and tend to our soil and be healthy enough to grow the gospel in our hearts 
in a way that grows us to be so close with you, so connected with you, and then so giving to the rest of the world around us to keep sharing this beautiful gospel seed. Father, we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Father. Amen.